The Lord be with you. And also, and also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger into his nail marks and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and Jesus stood in their midst, and he said to them, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to Jesus, My Lord, and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book but these are written down that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. And that through this belief, you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Come, Holy Ghost. Creator blessed, and in our hearts take up thy rest. Come with thy grace and heavenly aid to fill the hearts which thou hast made. To fill the hearts. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Please be seated. There are times in our life that take our breath away. How you have been left breathless in your life. Like Stella, for whose husband Daniel, we celebrate Mass today on the one year anniversary of his death. His death has taken your breath away. You have been left breathless, unable to breathe. We all know that here because we all share in your pain, Stella. And so 
we are praying for you on this the one year anniversary of Daniel's passing from this life to the next you do know that Daniel has not died but just changed places he has gone from this existence on earth to a heavenly existence and that he is with you right now hmm? and we pray that after this one year as you said you know I'll give it one year and that this coming year hopefully somebody else will take your breath away <laughs> You know I was going to say that because I wanted to make you smile. <laughs> so we continue to pray for Stella and for everyone that has had their breath taken away. There are those times that take your breath away when you find out that your child is addicted to drugs. Hmm? Those are times that take your breath away when there's a cancer diagnosis, your problems, or what? what is his name? Isaiah. 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 Would you like me to bless him? Yeah, sure. Yeah, how, how, uh, he's, how old? Two months. Two months. Let me have him so I can bless him. Okay. Now, there are the sad times that I just mentioned, and then these happy times, like when Isaiah was born, and when he came in here today, he took my breath away, as I'm sure he took your breath away. <laughs> right? Okay. And he's hungry right now, right? Yeah. <laughs> so. He stopped crying. Yeah. Okay. There. Okay, it's wonderful to hold babies and then give them back to their mothers. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 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 You got him? Oh my goodness. Oh. Oh, and his beautiful shoes from the swap meet. <laughs> <laughs> but there are times, happy times in our life that take our breath away and sad times in our life that take our breath away. When those sad times come in our life that take your breath away, what do you need? You need someone to give your breath back to you. And that's why we come here, to have the Lord breathe on us. As the Lord breathed on the first disciples and apostles who were huddled together in that room, paralyzed with fear. And he says, receive the Holy Spirit. He breathed on them. He breathed on them as he wants to breathe on each and every one of us to give us his life, to give you his breath, his energy, that you may experience that life that only Jesus can give, that God can give, breathing on you. Mm. We started off this sermon with something very sad, like Daniel's passing, mm. and then we've got here Isaiah, new life, mm. Mm -hmm. to put a smile on your face, to let you know that uh, there's always new life that everything is going to be fine in your life. You will be fine, Stella. Mm -hmm. And if there's a sign for that, that was a beautiful sign right now, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh -huh. We all need to experience those signs in our life because we are all just like Thomas. We all want to put our finger in Jesus' side. Mm -hmm. We all need that. That's why we have church and we have Holy Mass and we gather together, oftentimes huddled together like those first disciples, paralyzed in fear. And the Lord comes in our midst and says, receive the Holy Spirit. Breathe, everybody. I'm with you. Breathe. 
It's all fine. It will all be fine. Do you know what the, we are celebrating right now? Passover. The fact that the people of Israel, the people of God were passed over when they marked their doors with the blood of the lamb, death passed them over. Death couldn't touch them. Everything and anything that could destroy them has already been destroyed by the Lamb. And the Lamb for us is Jesus Christ. Their doors had to be marked with the blood of the Lamb, the doors of their home. What do we say before we receive the Holy Eucharist, Jesus in Holy Communion? Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. What is that? My home inside of me. I have been marked with the sign of the Lamb. The blood of the Lamb. And the Lamb is Jesus Christ. That's why we pray before we receive Holy Communion. We say, Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, give us peace. Because notice what happens when you receive the Holy Spirit. Your sins are forgiven. Your sins are wiped away. In other words, everything that is making you feel bad, like you can't continue, has been taken away. That's why at the beginning of Mass, I gave you absolution. I forgave you your sins. I wiped you clean to let you know you are okay. You are fine and you will be fine in this life. You have been forgiven. You've been wiped by the blood of the Lamb. And your home has been, your home, your inside has been marked with that blood. And anything bad that could touch you has been taken away, nailed to the cross. Jesus paid for it all. How wonderful. We should all be reminded of that every single time our breath is taken away and we say we can't continue. And oftentimes, you know, depression comes, grief comes anxiety comes in you and you feel like you won't be able to continue. Yes, you can. Through your power, no. Through the power that is in you. It's no longer I who live, but Jesus who lives in me, the Bible says. And through him who strengthens me, I can continue. Now, the word Passover. What does that word mean? It's a Hebrew word. The word Passover, all of you biblical scholars here, okay? It means to walk limping. Look that up, Google it. Passover means to walk limping. You walk limping. You know, with it, like with a cane, when you walk with a cane. So we are an Easter people. In, in other words, Easter is the Passover. Are you understanding that? We are a limping people, and we walk around in this light limping. You walk limping. That's what it means. To be an Easter people means to walk with a limp. In other words, to walk with your wounds. Ah, I have a question for everybody. I'm sure you've all missed it in the gospel today. When Jesus appears after the resurrection in his glorified body, he appears with his wounds. He says, look at my, the disciples recognize Jesus through his wounds. Jesus' glorious body, resurrected body, which is what? Which is you, because you are the body of Christ. Jesus' body, which is you, is a limping body, a wounded body. You've got a limping Passover body. You've been wounded by the death of your loved one. You got wounds. You've been wounded by your problem, by the cancer, by this, by that, by all your enemies, by your depression, by anxiety, by people making stuff up about you. You've been wounded by racism, by prejudice, by all sorts of stuff by all the things that they do to you at work. You've been wounded through that marriage that, that failed one or two or three, or you know maybe like Elizabeth Taylor eight times, you know. Uh, you've been wounded in this life and you're walking around with your wounds. But there is healing in our wounds. 
and the healing in our wounds comes when we find out that we are walking. We are not stuck. It's called Passover because in my woundedness, I pass over from death to life. That is the mystery of the passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus that I walk around limping. In other words, what am I saying here today? If you are an Easter people, which we are, and if Alleluia is our song, you got to learn how to walk around limping in this life. And be proud of your limps. Be proud of your wounds. Jesus, did, his, his body could have healed. And you are his body. You, you all know that the Bible teaches us that very, very clearly. That Jesus' body is me and you. Individually and collectively, we are his body. And his body could have been healed of his wounds. But no. He appears with his wounds because we are supposed to be wounded. And in our wounds, we bring life. How do I bring life to all of you? Through my wounds. I, I open myself up. I bleed. You know, and then I, I feed you with my blood. Well, you know, I'm speaking here figuratively, of course. I'm not, you know, here. Okay. <laughs> And that brings healing to people. Hmm? That heals. That's how Jesus healed. Come, Thomas, put your finger in my wounds. You know, stick your finger in my side. And it's okay, Thomas. That's what he wants to say to us today. It's okay. In just a little bit, I'm going to take the bread because I stand here in the person of Jesus. And I'm going to convert that bread into Jesus' body. And I will say, take and eat. <clears throat> for this is my body. But before I'm going to recite what Jesus did, what did he do? He broke the bread. And he said, this is my body, broken for you. Hmm? In order to be the body of Christ, you have to be the broken body of Bread that is not broken cannot be shared. Unless the bread is broken, it cannot be shared. And you know what? I took a loaf of bread and I, I did an experiment. When you have a loaf of bread, you can't really smell it. Its essence doesn't really come out until you break it. And then the essence comes out. Then you can smell the bread fully. So in order for your smell to come out, you know, you know your essence, you got to be broken. I hope there's light bulbs being lit somewhere, huh? <laughs> why things happen in our life? Because the biggest problem is, why is this happening? Huh? Well, you know, I don't know. But there is a purpose. Because God is our loving Father. There was a purpose to the cross. As there is a purpose to your cross. There was a purpose to the cross of God's Son. And there is a purpose to your cross. And it's okay to be weak. It really, it, it, it struck me when I was reading the different passion accounts of the Lord Jesus. That Jesus is the one who dies first. Did you ever notice that? The other two die later. They have to kill him. Jesus was the weak one. He was physically weak. He died in hours. Whereas people on the cross, you know how you die on the cross? Your lungs fill up with water as you're trying to breathe and then you die. Jesus died because he was physically weak. But he was spiritually strong. We are, as his body, we will be physically weak. But we are spiritually strong as we go along this light limping. So limp along. God is with you. It's all going to be okay. Everything will be fine. Mm -hmm. 
Did you get something out of this sermon? Because I end, I'm, I'm done. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, very much. That's all I have. That's it, huh? Yeah. You spent okay. yourself. Hmm? You spent yourself, huh? Okay. <laughs> I'm glad. So, tomorrow we have our parish mission. We have a wonderful speaker coming. Uh, he's coming in uh, tonight at midnight. He's going to give a presentation at each Mass tomorrow. Uh, and the mission is in English. Uh, we have the concert from 7 to 8 p.m. tomorrow night. Our parish mission concert, the first talk of four talks that he will be giving here. And he's not boring because I would not invite anybody who's boring. He's got great stories. You will be engaged. He's a writer. He is also a singer. And it will be great inspiration for you. So you want to make sure you're here from 7 to 8 p.m. tomorrow night. Look at our screen, how wonderful. We have our screens here so we can see, okay, how great. All right, that's our parish mission right there, okay. Christ within you, mark your calendars. It's a free mission. It's for free, okay, it's free. I'm not one of those who, I, I was in one church where the priest announced that the coffee was free. What he didn't tell the people was that he was going to charge them one dollar for the cups. <laughs> yeah, I don't do that. Okay. So, and then Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, every day, three different sessions in English from 7 to 8 p.m. So you want to make sure you're here discovering Christ within you. How to walk in this life limping. Because my number one job is to teach you how to bring health into your spirit. Because I am a spiritual doctor. Mm -hmm. I'm a doctor of the spirit. Okay. And uh, I guess I said this in a couple of sermons or something like that. And... Uh, Apparently, the secretary is the secretaries tell me that they're right, Mary. Like, they're, they're, a number of people are coming in saying, You know, is the doctor here? Uh, <laughs> it, it is, reminds me about two or three weeks ago, this gentleman brought his wife and he says, Father, you know, they 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 say that you have a doctor. Um, so could you could, could you uh check her out for me, do a little checkup on my wife? <laughs> <laughs> <I said. laughs> anyway, those are side stories, but none of you are inter too interested in those things. But uh, I'm a doctor of the spirit to bring health to your inside life, bring you health into your inside life. Did, uh, today, I put, a, I put it on Facebook, this amazing testimonies that people bring of healing through the holy packets and through my ministry here. But I don't know if you paid attention to the first reading that they even carried the sick out into the streets and laid them on cots and mats so that when Peter came by, at least his shadow might fall on one or another of them. A large number of people from the town's in the vicinity of Jerusalem also gathered, bringing the sick and those disturbed by unclean spirits. And they were all healed. The Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5 says. Huh? Because what's the real healing that we need? Inside healing. The apostles forgave sins, brought healing to people, which is what I do right now through that same power. Huh? I breathe. Hmm? There was a lady in one of the parishes I was at she had just lost her husband too. And she said to me, you know, all week, Father, I wait in order to see you walk down the aisle and just smile at me. All week, I wait for that. That healing that flows in our life. So I pray for that. And I hope that you do make uh, it a point to come tomorrow between 7 and 8 on Sunday for our healing concert uh, tomorrow evening, Sunday, 
April 24th, 2022, and Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday as well. As we stand and profess our faith today with our creed, which is up on our screens, and let's profess our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, 